like 240 degrees and two Torx bits broken to loosen up a bolt. Right, so today what I'm going to show you is the refurbishment of an old rear caliper. So this is the caliper that I took out of the car and I replaced with a brand new one uh, from Rock Auto. So this is what it looked like and this is the one that I've done a couple of months ago which is from the opposite side and it's ready to be installed. Well it's not quite ready to be installed but that is how it stands. So I'm going to be replacing the banjo bolt, I'm going to be using the same bolt on the back, spring is still the same spring, the sliders and the grease are all new and uh, the caliper here also is going to be new and I'm going to also fit uh, later on new brake pads as well. So it's a complete refurbishment so and uh, the thing is this this was also uh, acid treated and then painted and that's why there's no rust visible even though it's been a few months stored and uh, I do have brand new bolts to be installed with it as well so just gonna show you the process and uh, get on with it right so uh, starting off by just taking everything apart so I'm gonna have to put gloves for this because it's a bit cold today and then uh, we'll see how it goes. It's actually been a few months since I've done the other caliper, so I can't truly remember how to do it. But I'm going to start by removing the sliders, which actually were... <laughs> this one is perfectly fine. This one's a bit stiff, but this is also usable. So the sliders are actually reusable, but I'm going to replace them regardless. Removing the rubbers. I apparently already had removed that one in the past. And I'm going to take apart the back of a mechanism. Right, so I'm going to start by removing the spring instead. Right, so that's the spring out of the way. The lid nipple. Now, if uh, I got this right, it's not a 12 and it is a 10 mil. And it doesn't want to come out, so we'll have to call the big guns. Well, it seems like nothing wants to come out today, and I may need to go to the workbench. No, this one did come out. Okay, good. Right, to pop the piston, one thing that can be done is just to move the lever forwards and backwards multiple times and uh, as you move the lever, you should be able to see the piston coming out. Let's see if I can put this steady. So this is a good sign, this is a sign that the, the mechanism is working. I have a piston out, clearly, so I might as well continue removing that because setting up the camera to show you something on the vice is going to be annoying, so I might as well do as much as I can here. Right, so the next thing that I want to do is to remove the two seals that are here. Now, try to show you this the best I can. So we got rubber seal and a spring. Now the spring is easy to come out. You can just take it by hand, don't need any leverage or anything. So the spring comes out, and now we have two seals and one ring that holds things. Now, to remove the seal, I'm going to hopefully show you, there is a little bit of a lip that you can always find on the rubber, and uh, you can just put the screwdriver there, and then twist it, and then put the lip apart. So well, let's see if I can get a close-up of this. Right, hopefully this is good enough. And uh, what you see is that there is a little bit of a lip there, so if I put my screwdriver and I twist it, it comes out and then I just go around and uh, what I do is usually get the, the biggest screwdriver that will fit because that just makes my life easier. And now I just go around. Yeah. 
and remove the seal. But it's quite interesting that uh, it's pretty much impossible to show. Right, so that is the outer seal removed. Now, next thing we have here, I'm gonna get some light for this. Okay, so the next thing we've got here is this snap ring that needs to be squeezed in and I just got the wrong tool for it. So there's this snap ring. So I need to pull the ring in and it comes out. And then, then we have this square, this other ring that holds the piston in place. And then finally, the last thing, it's the square cut seal that's over here. And we just need to prise that off to come out. Right, so as you can see, that's all of the important bits of the piston mechanism moving, uh, all sorted, and yeah, plenty of crud and all of that, but we'll get to that. Now I'm going to give this bolt another go in a second, but first I'm going to see if I can remove this one without needing to go to the vise, because the camera is already set. I'm right, just going to give it a little bit of a clean. Might as well give this one a little bit of a clean before having another go. Now the interesting thing about this caliper specifically, or well both of them, is that they were rebuilt by um, a reputable retailer of a specialist of Lotus parts just two years ago and you can see the condition that it's got to. So I don't know what the rebuild process that you pay for get, gets you, but you can see what it looks like two years later. So uh, yeah, there is either the wear on them is just crazy. And I know that this car was held outside, uh, was stored outside during those two last two years. One year was in my ownership and one year was before I owned it. Um, but yeah, this is this is how it gets so crusty, and you know it's a good sign in a way because you know that this car was used, so it and you can see that you know things move fairly freely, so functionally it's not too bad, but I'm just making a full refurbishment because I want to get it painted as well. Anyway, I'm gonna take that out now and uh, see how things go. Right, so here we are at Vice, and uh, I'm gonna see if I can hold this in a way that the camera can get a good view right that looks good to me I think let's see if I can focus things on the action Ooh, there you go right so now what I have here is T40 Torx I'm gonna start with that one I'm gonna give it a couple of taps just to break anything break any rust free on the inside um, it's just a technique that seems to work quite often so it's worth having it giving it a go I'm also gonna clean it up a little bit more and now trying to break it loose so I'm hoping that the vibration loosened up the, um, the threads inside a little bit so that I can then take everything out Right, hopefully nothing will break today, but I am using the breaker bar, which is a little bit concerning in a way. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a push on each direction first. And I think I am seeing the Torx bit actually bending. Yeah, I believe that this Torx bit is not strong enough for this task, so I'm going to change it to a different one. You just saw me fumbling about a bit and not getting anywhere. Um, what is happening is that this Torx uh, bolt is bending my um, Torx bits. So I'm going to use heat to get that out. But before I do that, I'm going to move on to the bolt at the back of the piston. Because the piston itself 
the system of the piston has uh, some um, rubber there. So I want to take all of that rubber out before I use heat to remove this. So that's why I'm moving on to this one. Okay, so now that the lever is out, I can pull the screw, the piston screw in. And that comes out from this side and you just saw falling down one of the seals which is this one here right and then you can see here from footage that there is another seal over there and then a ring here so I'll put all of this on the side and then we'll go back to the other table when we're rebuilding everything but yeah rubber ring with um, hexagonal nut insert so all of this needs to go back in in a minute, but now that I don't have any rubber around here, I can actually apply heat. Trying to bring in the big gun. Well, that's what happens uh, when things go wrong. So yeah, don't forget your safety glasses. Right, so I'm going to give this a final attempt with more impact. And I'm going to hold it in a way that the impact has more effect. And I'm going to bring my big boy gun. So there's a very good chance that this will damage stuff. First setting, let's see how lucky I am today. Well, I am not very lucky today at all. That was even worse. I'm trying to get it while it's hot. Nothing like a little bit of heat, like 240 degrees, and two Torx bits broken to loosen up a bolt. Now I got a funny feeling that there is thread lock on this one, and that would probably be the reason why the heat needed to be so intense, but we now certainly have this bolt out and I can't touch anything because everything is too hot so we can go back in the workbench and uh, actually I'm not going to go back on the workbench just yet because right now I'm just going to give this a very good scrub to to clean this as much as possible Right, so you can hear in the background, <laughs> that's my uh, fans recirculating the air out of the garage because of all of the rust that came out of here. Now as you can see, the angle grinder can't get everywhere, and uh, this is rather an, an annoying thing about it, but uh, there are bits that I can't remove as much rust as I would like to because it's not really feasible by hand to do. but going to continue scraping off as much as I can and uh, there is one other thing that I actually use very often which is a drill bit with a nylon a brush but my brush is actually very worn as you can see here so this won't do much I need to actually buy a brand new one uh, because a new one is a bit longer and that means you can reach places with a drill bit not hitting it so you can see here I can't actually get there I can in this case but there are scenarios here like here if I was a little bit further out, I could actually reach around there. But we'll see how things go and we'll continue this time lapse.
Right, so uh, this is as far as I got at the moment and uh, I am uh, unsure at the moment if I'm going to sandblast this or not. I'm going to do a little bit of research to find out if I can sandblast this or if sandblasting may damage the polished um, places where the sliders and the piston moves. Now, um, because sandblasting will probably get me quite far in these little, you know, these awkward spots, even though I, I've already gone pretty far as far as, as the angle grind is concerned. So, we'll have to stop rolling here and uh, do a little bit of research. Here we are back at the table and uh, I'm going to show you something that I have uh, concocted up together uh, in a few years ago in order to do this job that I'm about to do. So what I'm going to do is sandblast uh, as much as I can from the from the caliper and uh, in order to do that I'm going to try to avoid sand from getting into the main piston and the two uh, sliders. So to do that what I have here this is this is uh, just the bottom of a can, just a kind of pop, and uh, I've cut it roughly to the size of the piston hole, so that I can fit it here and uh, put a bolt through it with a washer on the opposite side, then tighten the bolt on the opposite side, and this should seal it from any uh, hush sand from getting there and uh, scratching the inner surface. Right, so that protects the big piston and now I have exactly the same idea two more bolts with two washers and these are roughly a little bit bigger than the size of the big spacers. So I'm gonna put them in that direction so that they are kind of like not in the way of the sand stream when I'm sandblasting. So this covers these two, now I just need to cover these last two and what I'm going to do for those is really simple, I just put back the bolts that came out because I'm going to replace them anyway. Right, so since I don't have a spare bunch of bolts I'm just going to put a piece of a kitchen roll in there which, you know, I'll have to clean up afterwards later but this is all I need to make sure that no sun gets into the main piston. So the next thing I'm going to do is just take this outside uh, and uh, sunblast this just to get you know as much as I can off the, the rust away but there isn't much left it's just the, the awkward spots that I need to focus on and then uh, I can uh, take the next step. So, I'll be back in a second with this sandblasted. And here we are back. I hope that uh, you can see an improvement. I actually can't. I try to sandblast it best I can, but this is not really coming out, so it's, it's too encrusted. So, I'm going to move on to the next step, which is to get this stuff out. And get this treated with some acid. And it's already started. So that's a, that's a sign that there is a, a chemical reaction going on. So now I'm just going to leave this here for a couple of hours. And then uh, we'll see how good it looks like. And uh, assess the situation then. Right, so here we are. And it's been a couple of hours. And uh, you can see the froth on the top. Which has also a bit of crap. Not quite sure how the froth gets crap. Uh, but it's the bubbles, they froth up, and uh, hopefully, you can see here from the side, this is where the acid ends, this is the amount of froth, and then uh, that's where the froth ends. So there's quite a bit of froth here, and now for the big reveal, uh, yeah, the froth is kind of like stopping you from being able to see what's going on, but I think... I think you can see from the camera, from this camera here, let's zoom this in a bit. It's a little bit darker and there is still some uh, acid that did not uh, eat through some of this rust. 
So some of this rust needs to be scraped again and then it needs to be dipped again. But for a first run, I think most of the existing rust has already been dealt with. So I'm going to take this out of here and zoom out the camera. Right. So take this out, put it on the sides. And I'm going to sit down this and go get a little bit more of cardboard. And I also have some rubber gloves, so I'm going to put on these thick rubber gloves, which I have here just for this. I mean, you don't really need the rubber gloves, but I'm just going to put them on because I've got them at hand. And that makes me extra safe. For this cleanup. Right, so I'm not gonna really do much here as far as uh, cleaning the acid because what I'm trying to actually do right now is just remove the surface rust and then I'm gonna dip it back in. That should have loosened up the rust a bit and uh, we'll see what another 30 minutes of being dipped in acid will do to it. Right, and now I can put this on the side and go back to the workbench because I still need to remove the rust from the brackets. Here's the stuff from earlier, so I'm just, I'll am just i clean this in a minute. But right now what I want to focus is on the brackets. Now this bracket has an annoying shape because removing the rust from over there is going to be awkward. And this one is pretty straightforward, there's, there's an easy shape to work with. So I'll start with the easy one actually, and uh, we'll see how things go. Right, so this is as far as I can take it in a workbench. So I'm gonna try to sand, sandblast that, see how far that goes. Let's get a little bit of a focus here. Yeah, so that's how good it looks at the moment. So I'm gonna just sandblast the rest because I can't access any of that. So I'm gonna try to sandblast that, see what comes out, and then put that also in the acid dip. So here I have it, it's now been sandblasted, so most of that rust has disappeared. So the next step is just to dip it in acid. So here's the two pieces now. And all I have to do is put them in the acid together with the whole caliper. And that will be all of the rust treatment needed. Just gonna do a quick check on the caliper. And uh, there's still a bit of brown there. I'm not sure if the camera can actually catch it, but there's still a bit of brown there. So I reckon that uh, I still need a bit of more time for the, the phosphoric acid to work. So I'm just going to leave this now overnight because it's 8 o'clock now and uh, it's just late enough that I don't really want to do more work today. So we'll see you tomorrow and uh, we'll then check how things are. And hopefully we will be in a position, oh, I do need to do something about this spring. So I will be cleaning this spring now. Uh, but yeah, tomorrow, um, when we get back, we will then uh, start putting all of the seals and, uh, and pieces new. So I got the kit from Rock Auto. So that's the, the kit for the caliper, all of the inner bits. And this is the sliders, which is a different kit. So I can fit those later on once the, the caliper is uh, out of the, the bath. So for now, I'm just going to do a little bit of a clean on the spring and uh, we'll catch you up tomorrow. Right, and here we are. 
it is now the next day, so this thing has had enough time to do all of its magic. The caliper itself, which funny enough, it still has a couple of tiny bits of brown. So I'll focus on those in a bit. And now I need to go fishing. I have the spring inside there and um, I did lose it, so I'm gonna have to tip this to get the spring. Okay, so that brings the spring up. Then can get the spring out of here. There's still a little bit of brown around there, which seems a bit strange. There shouldn't be any by this time. And uh, what I'm going to try to do is make, clean this stuff as quickly as I can and then assess the situation. Right, so that is a caliper as dry as I can make it with this stuff. I'm gonna take it outside and spray air onto it, which should dry anything that isn't dried yet. And then I'll be back in a second to start reassembling everything. In oh no, I'm not going to reassemble everything inside actually. I'm going to paint it first. So I'm going to dry this out and then I'm going to paint it, spray it. And once this is sprayed, the plan is to use the Dremel to clean the inside of the three uh, enclosures. So that they're clean as much cl as clean as they ca I can make them. And uh, these rings around. Because the Dremel is the best tool for this. And then reassemble everything. Uh, so I'll be back with these bits all uh, painted. Right, now while I'm waiting for the paint to dry. I'm going to do, well, the little that I can do in that time frame. Which is to take the other caliper and finish off its refurbishment because although it's pretty much done there's just one little thing missing which is put the new brake pads so I might as well show that process which is you know very very conv conv convoluted and confusing and all of those things so one brake pad goes on one side and one brake pad goes on the other side like this. Right, that's the two tabs on the top. I may have a little bit of a problem here because I got these two bits that are may not align correctly. I may yes, those are right at the edges of the caliper, so those are in the way. Right, so for future reference, the Oldsmobile brake pads that are from this company... Uh, well, there is no sign of... Ah, oh, there it is. Guardian by Wagner. Those are not straight fit. Right now that I've done a little bit of fabric cobbling, we can come back and try to fit things. So it's just worth saying that, uh, well, I've ordered these parts like a year ago and uh, never fitted them. I mean, Rock Auto never really fails to, to deliver what they promise. But, uh, yes, yeah, sometimes, you know, things are sold and they fit, but they only fit the exact car that they were made for and not the one that you actually have. Um, so you got to remember that these parts are from an old mobile Cutlass. And although the calipers are the same, they don't have the same brackets. And uh, it's possible that just the way that this fits on the Oldsmobile doesn't quite match the M100. But now that that's all dealt with, I can just clip both sides. And as you can see, that's clipped. And on this side, it's also met the clip. And I'm just going to install the other one. And that is brand new brake pads and all of the interior bits on that caliper. Right, so as far as the pieces that are needed, 
for the caliper. I have these two, I've showed them earlier. And uh, this one here is the sliders. And the center bit. So as you can see, I've got... I don't know what that is for. Oh, I think that's to help fit things. Yeah, that goes in there. Yeah, I think that's to help gui guide um, the sliders when installing them. So I've got two sliders and four rubber boots. And a clip, brand new clip. I'm going to put them back in the box. Then the other box. Now I'm going to try to keep things inside the box. So this, the seal, is the same seal as this one. This is the piston outside seal. There is the square cut seal from the piston ring. There is this nylon seal. This is the one that the screw, this screw, uh, rotates inside, so there. There's that one there, which is this big one here. That thing there is the one that is here, that. And uh, that smaller one, it's this one here that will also be replaced, this one here. And then there's that, which nicely enough, it's the tip for the piston itself. So it's quite a comprehensive set for everything related to the piston and the piston screw. So one more thing that I want to replace is the bleed screw. As far as bleed screws I actually have multiple uh, bleed screws and these ones are marked Elan rear. So it's a set that I've purchased in the past uh, to replace the bleed screws. And you can see I have brand new ones in the middle and I also have the ones that came out of the car which are reusable so I just keep them for the sake of if anything goes wrong I have the old ones. But yeah that's the brand new one so I can replace this one and keep the old one over there. And those are the lids for them so I'm going to just put this one on the side and uh, go put a second coat of paint. Right so it is now tomorrow and uh, the caliper has been painted two coats, two very quick coats, and you can see it's it's greenish. And uh, of course there was paint spray going everywhere, so all of that needs to be addressed. And I also have the brackets. So now the current job that I'm going to focus on is to use my Dremel to make sure that I clean out a little bit of the the paint from all of these areas before I start putting everything back together. So hopefully you can see from the video that most of that paint's gone. What's the name of that thing? <clears throat> I'm gonna use a little bit of white spirit and just give it a little wipe and then uh, start assembling everything. I'm going to start with a piston and one thing is I'm going to reuse the metal ring but everything else is going to be brand new. One thing to note is that there's this nylon that needs to go so that things move and then there's a rubber that puts pressure onto the nylon but this is all on that side so this is all I need for the inside this can be now installed okay that's it that's that's out now good so nylon and rubber finally this one that I usually reuse. Now the final thing is the bracket and now the bolt. Just finger tight for now and then I will 
tighten it later with the torque wrench. But that is the piston and now I can move on to the inside of the piston. So the first thing on the inside of the piston that I'm going to need is I'm going to put a little bit of um, brake fluid inside. So square cut seal on the inside. Here's the piston, I'm going to put the little top cap on a piston, just because I got a brand new one, so might as well install it there. There it is. Right. Now this is the bit that I always struggle with, which is put this ring around the piston and then pushing the piston inside. So this ring goes there, like this, then I have this, I don't know what you call this, but it's a retainer effectively, which I need to push inwards to then install around the retaining ring. So the retaining ring moves freely around it, but it won't come out once the piston is trying to be pushed in. And now this is the bit that I always, well, I struggle with that and I struggle with this. But the thing is, what I'm going to try to do today is to put the dust cover around the piston first. Now grease up the piston and then we're going to move to the workbench. Right, now to install the rest of the piston, um, what I found that works best for me is to... First of all, oil everything, put the piston in first, and wind it back. The next thing is to put this one, this ring, this seal, and this is the one that I always find very difficult, because it's it's undersized to the piston, so it always goes in in tension. So the way I do it is I fit it around the outside of the piston and then I push it down. And uh, to push it down, I use two screws, two flathead screws, and just try to push it down as best as I can, one side at a time. So that side's gone in, continue pushing it down, then try to le leverage lever this side in, hopefully in a way that the other side won't pop out. And I always found this, yeah you see, you probably don't see, but right now one side's gone in and the other one popped out, which isn't going to help me. Hopefully you can see that I just managed to pull everything down. Now, I may be damaging it, I don't actually know. But next time I refurbish I'll fit another one. Now, I have fitted this bugger six times so far. Actually, probably more than six times over the years. And I've always struggled and this is the best method that I've found so far. So if you know a better way to do it, or an easier way to do it, let me know in the comments. Right, so the next thing is the retaining ring, squeeze it, and goes in, no problems at all. And the last one is the rubber boot. Again, I always put some uh, grease on it, and then installing it is always tricky for me. But it needs to go around everything, and it needs to be pressed all around at the same time and again it's just one of those things that it's a it's an interference fit and doing an interference fit by hand is always difficult this one has gone surprisingly easy and now to fit the rubber ring around the piston what i usually do is just pop the piston out then put the ring around it 
So now that the rubber boot is back in, I just push the piston back. And now just before finishing off, go to my other box and I get the brake pad retaining clip which needs to be installed at an angle and then rotated into its resting position and it's easier to install this before the piston is fully retracted now in my case just my luck there's a little bit of rust here stopping the whole thing from sliding so I need to just scrape off the rust around So the final bit now is to get the sliders. Right, so the first thing about the sliders is that I'm going to use some brake grease here and I'm just going to grease everything as best as I can. And now the nice thing about the kit that I have is that there's this guide pin in there. All I need to do is put the rubber boot on one side Take advantage of the guide pin, push it through, pops on the other side. Now I'm going to pop it all the way through. Again, use the guide pin. A little bit more brick grease. The inside. It's worth noting that I use the brake grease here. Right, so that's aligned. Now I'm gonna pop it out. And that's it. It's moving very easily. As you can see. So, same job on the other side now. As I progress, the, the clutter piles up. Oh! Look what I forgot. Now this is very annoying. Right, so here's the caliper back. Uh, now that I have the spring installed in place. Uh, so the final bit is to put that bracket in place, put the spring, which it's over here, and the cal in the brake pad. So I'm nearly done. Just want to finish off the job now. Ah, okay. So what I've done wrong is that I put this bracket the flip side around. So I'm going to have to remove this. Nope, I got that bracket right. What the hell am I doing wrong here? Right, let's see if I got this right. Nope, that's, that's where the lever goes. Yes, this is how it goes. So... Handbrake cable goes from here, clips into their pulls, and then the spring, right, the, so the handbrake cable comes from here, pulls in here, in that direction, and then the spring retracts it back like that. So that's now back in. Need to retract the piston again. Now spring. Now the spring is always a nightmare to install. Oh, the spring's over here. Right. Now stretching the spring is always annoying. Uh, I always find this a, a, something I struggle with. 
especially if I'm not doing this with a vice. So let's see what happens now. Oh, that wasn't too bad. I guess having everything clean helps. And the final thing, you already seen it. Put the brake pads in place. And excuse me the clutter, but that is just the way that the job works. Oh no, there's one more thing. A new bleed nipple with a new dust cover as well. And now finally, the pads, which one of them needs some copper grease and the other one doesn't need any. Now that's the wrong thing. Right, a little bit of copper grease here. On the back of this pad. And on the sliding parts of it. So there we have it, a fully rebuilt brake caliper which has only two things missing and the two things that are missing I actually don't know where I have left them but the things that are missing were with the other caliper which are two new bolts to hold it onto the hub structure, the obstruct, hub structure and a banjo bolt. So I'm not going to show those, those will be for another day. But this is now rebuilt and ready to go and just be swapped with one that needs to be rebuilt in my cars. So this makes my life easier going forward as I know that I have in my shelf a fully working, fully rebuilt brake caliper and uh, whenever I need to do something I just swap both and then I can rebuild them on my own time. 